naught can ease my heart of sorrow. Weeping for this prayer on this, my wedding day. The year of our heart, 1656. Reverend Jonathan Gurdon, dost thou take the Abigail for thy wife? I die first seeing the foul deformity of death. I have lost my shield, my help, saviour, pilot, bride. Why did he pluck me from me? Did I not keep thy word, Lord? Preach the everlasting gospel. I fought on the side of right brother against brother in the army of the saints, against the royalist antichrist King Charles and his pestilential minions, shouting the Lord's name in the morning mists of Naseby, the place of dragons. Many good men died there, but we cleansed out the menstrual rags of Rome with our blood and renewed England's covenant with God to bring order out of chaos. Yet, I am punished for it. Abigail is dead. And after the glorious victory, drum muted, trumpet silent, the good Oliver, Lord Protector, playing Master Cromwell to his friends, asked me to stay at his side for the Commonwealth's sake, but I turned aside from this great honor. Men hanker after power, but I was not tempted by this world's baubles, yet I am punished for it. I became this people. I became a simple pastor. Here in Sonic. Proclaimed the word truly, administered the sacraments rightly, maintained discipline strictly, yet I am punished for it. I began this Lord, you struck your cold pruning knife into her warm breast. And her shining brains, so full of love, was snuffed out. <laughs> this is God's revenge for some unknown sin. <laughs> I ask forgiveness, Lord. And wait, and wait, and wait for the motion of the Spirit. <laughs> He moves in me. You stand for me, and I'm here. Israel of the ten tribes, no less the eight. You called me away from preaching God's word. Running up and down, staring at folk, gnashing my teeth, and proclaiming the day of the Lord throughout London. Strange acts, strangers, computing, plaguing, tormenting, skipping, leaping, dancing like a big fool, naked before women. Ah, but God was in my mouth, burning like an oven in me, setting my tongue aflame. But God then fell into my pocket, making me throw all my gold and silver on the ground like these empty shells for love of him. Oh, I need thee, Abigail is dead. Now you're hot for me before you were hot against me and other holy ranters. We're simple men who only proclaim God's word as the spirit moves us day and night in the streets and marketplaces. But you persecute us. Up and down, up and down. You had me whipped out of Southwark, Brother Gurdon. You call me a mad, bad blasphemer. And so do when you use profane language, on laxing conduct, enjoy bawdy mixed dancing, singing extemporary songs, wear your hair shaggy, and worse, say that God has told you that hats should be worn during prayers. I should, I should. If Christ would not take off his hat to his earthly father, Joseph, why should we to our father in heaven? That's it. Prayers are a blasphemy. But I'll still wear them. And... Do all those things you speak of. So oh, that's sprightly now as my bones winter. Oh, what day did I grow old, Brother Gurdon? No matter. I'd still rant with the best of them that God made all men from one mould, and this land, once lost to the rich and lordly, belongs to the poor and the forgotten forever and Forever. Well, we're the one mind there, Brother Yates. We fought side by side at Naseby against the king for that. But you're still a notorious ranting lord of chaos, Israel Yates. Israel of the ten tribes, no less, Yates. 
So why call on me, Brother Gerson? Well, it's a measure of my despair in more than once. I wouldn't have you in my house. But once we were comrades in arms in the glorious army of the saints. I've got no time to talk of battles past when there are so many new ones to fight. Help me, Brother Yates. You are a sinner, but you have the power to heal the sick. If I'm a sinner, perhaps my power comes from the devil. No matter, God or devil. Bring her back to me and you can have my soul. Keep it. It's too small. Bring her back to salvation, Israel. I've seen the bright lights of Buckinghamshire and Leicester, but I've never seen a miracle. You've seen a king fall, a commonwealth rise, an Englishman standing upright and free. Yes, that is a miracle. But heal my bride, Brother Yates. I cannot. I beg you. <laughs> the dead are dead. <laughs> cry long, cry loud. <laughs> you gather thorns, not vines. <laughs> I've had five children, three boys, two girls, and they all died. Five pretty babes in a row. Five. All five. Five different mothers, but that did not stop the Lord of Mercy taking them through destruction's gate. Did you cry? Oh, see. I told myself that death is only a short-lived lie, but that didn't help. So I prayed. Have you prayed? Hard and long. Pray harder, longer. Do you believe that Christ lived and died and rose again? Yes. You can believe that. You can believe anything. <laughs> To pray again, that she might live again. Lord God Almighty, <laughs> give us the word of life. In the name of Jesus, who overthrew the grave, give us comfort. Let Abigail live. Let live. She does not move. Oh, you were right, all things are possible, but not this. Not even the faith that feeds us can raise the dead. If they are truly dead. If they are truly dead. Is there hope in that gift? Perhaps she sleeps. You torment me with it, and perhaps. In hard winters, I've often encased myself in a sack of feathers to keep warm, but they can be dangerous. Feathers can make you sneeze. How many larks and kingfishers have I missed because I sneeze? She lies still as death. Not her. The feathers, uh, look at the feathers about her face. The rest are motionless, but one moves. See the faintest wisp of breath? There. There. It's a trick of the light. No. 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 It rises and falls. Lord of life, it is a miracle. A single feather moves and I am knee deep in June. See, see, she lives and breathes. Breathe, sure. Live. That's a harder question. Half dead in half shadow. Catalepsy, Brother Gurdon. She's fallen into deep sleep. Sleep is a kind of death, too. I never trusted it. I say my goodbye to the sun nightly and tremble. I dreamt last night that the prophet Elijah stopped me and claimed the world was coming to an end. When I objected, he tried to sell me a box of figs. Of course, we might have it all wrong. Perhaps we're truly asleep when we think we're awake, and those things that give us pleasure and pain are mere dreams. Can you wake her to dream? I must, else she sleep to resurrection day. But why you, not me? I love her. And love should bring her back to life and dreaming. As long as man sets himself above other men, he has limits, and God cannot pour his holiness into him, for God is without limits. But I'm not proud, standing five foot ten in what's left of my stockings, curing carbuncles and hemorrhoids, and running up and down in the gutters of the world, and so God pours his glory into me. Wake her, and I'll keep her in the gutters with you. This quartz must pull her back. 
as the magnetized earth and all its bodies are attracted by lodestones in secret and invisible ways, so the polary power of this humble rock will attract the soul of Sister Abigail from shadow. Fix your heart and mind on quartz, Brother Gurdon. Together, we will make it move. God's will. Call her, Brother Gurdon, gently, gently. Call her back. Abigail, there's darkness above thee, below thee, darkness around thee. No world, no people, only empty corners. For the Lord hangeth this world on nothing, and nothing is what and where you are. Endless night. Hear the sounds, Abigail. A cock crows. A dog barks. Now. See that spark of light ahead? Abigail, there. Abigail, there. It grows. The darkness lifts. And the sun. The sun bursts through the last mists. And see. Oh, See the colors of our world. You are home. Ah! Christ is merciful. His love shines like flowers on their stem. Who raised me from the dead? Only Christ can raise the dead, so it follows you were but sleeping. Died August 4th in the year of our Lord, 1653. Noon, the sun shining through the bedroom window and the fields of wheat and the apples turning red. Sir, I gathered around my bed, weeping and watching for my last breath and my soul left me. Sarah, that's Sarah's voice. Who's Sarah? My first wife. Your first wife? Yes, she died August the 4th, 1653. You brought back the wrong one. Ah. Uh, yes, well, that can happen. Who disturbs my rest? Is that Sarah? But she has possession then. Possession of who? Sister Abigail. Abigail is possessed by my first wife. Complete. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Could I? I didn't know you had a first wife. I'm not privy to your domestic arrangements, Brother Gordon. Who disturbs my rest? No one, Sarah. It was Abigail we wished to disturb, not you. I see it plain now. Sarah called Abigail to shadow on her wedding day, made her sleep, and takes her place here. We must discover why else Abigail returned to sleep and sleep eternal. Sarah, it was God's will you die, but Abigail cannot die. On your will, she loved you as I loved you. Please, Brother Gurdon, we have certain set ways of doing this. She'll only answer under spell of quartz. Now, call to her, Brother Gurdon. Yeah, call to her again. Sarah? Sarah, answer your husband, Jonathan. Jonathan? You, my husband, Jonathan, who did you weep when I died? Oh, yes, I saw thee weep, and never go weep, holding my hand till it turned cold. How long did you weep, Jonathan? How long did those salt rivers run? How long, Abigail, till they froze? Was she still weeping, Jonathan, when you first kissed her? We wept for as long as it was possible to weep, until the water dried and we could weep no more, Sarah. Oh, welcome to her our home and orphan. Raised her as our own daughter. You were away, preaching and fighting to make a new land of this land for our Lord. And one who was scarce, prospects were poor, as we suffered to endure. And then pleasant beams of prosperity broke through the clouds between. <gasps> oh, good years stretched ahead. Years of ease, oh, all lost and stolen from me. I had only the worst years, Jonathan. Yes, sir, the years of struggle, full of pism purpose when we were up and doing and the spirit shone in excellency around us. We were young then. Oh, there's a word now. Young. Young. young lovely word, young. Remember those years, Sarah? 
they were the good years, years which could never be bettered, never come again. I remember the April when God struck me down with a hot sweat, Abigail, took on my duties as I lay stricken, gaining strength even as I was losing mine. And she bloomed and I withered. I knew my death day was near. And my heart grew heavy, husband, for we had so little time together. So little time. Yet you said love was a durable fire. Sarah, but despite our love, I knew you'd raise another in my place after I was gone. And I knew in my heart you'd choose Abigail. Sarah. I grew envious as my last hour came. And I, I drew you both towards me. And you saw me dying. And your souls overflowed with the sorrow of it. And I asked you, Jonathan, to take an oath on the holy book. Not to marry Abigail. And I died. My soul fled with rushing wings. And my life breath returned to the place from whence it came. But evening before my shadow had faded from the house, you'd looked into her eyes as once you looked into mine. And you understood her as once you understood me. And you could not let her go as once you could not let me go. And you pledged yourselves to each other. You broke your pledge to me. You forgot your oath and my darkness. Strong will came to claim my rights, and my spirit tore at Abigail's soul, pulling her into sleep and shadow. Her. Release her for our love's sake. Keep her for our love's sake. <laughs> so much cruelty. And all for love's sake. Brother Gurdon, did you by word, act, or thought look profanely on thy ward, Abigail, while Sarah lived? Mm, no, I swear it. There is no deceit here to be brought to daylight. I feel no guilt because there is no guilt in me, Sister Abigail. Did you look on Brother Gurdon whilst his wife, Sarah, lived? Never! I swear it! Sarah, do you know this to be true? It's true. I oh, know he did not look on, on her while I lived, but after I was gone, wishing to be together, they broke their holy oath to me. That's why I'm guilty. And so Satan drags me down. Sarah took me in as her child. She gave me her home. She made me her family. And I broke my promise to her. And God has eaved it. And even I'm guilty. So you're innocent. So God punishes me. No. We do it to there's ourselves. There's no guilt in me, Abigail. Yet there's no punishment harsh enough for me to suffer. Believe it. I never believe a mind in pain. Guilt and punishment, punishment and guilt... God is tired of guilt in every corner, punishment in every room. Why nurture tortures within me? Sting them out and follow me. Oh. Loving is the essence of the joys this world affords. And I kissed and hugged the ladies and made the fiery chariot mount in me without sin and guilt. Not a trace. Not a trace. You are ranting. And you are dead. Justice. Give me justice, they've betrayed my love. Dead, Sarah, justice is with the living for their sake and your soul's sake. Let Abigail go. I suffer. It's natural. I am no longer loved. That's natural too. You are remembered with love. You cannot ask for more. Oh, it's hard, it's hard. <laughs> it isn't easy. So give liberty to the inward woman, Sarah. Let Abigail go. I can't. I want someone to blame. This is the hardest. Oh, there is no one to blame. <coughs> Let God speak and confirm it. <coughs> oh, my children, my sweet sister in Christ, I am God, the first mover, and I'm moved now to give my verdict. <laughs> Abigail, you are not guilty. Sarah. Let her go. Why? Out of love, you poor fool. Uh, uh, Jonathan! What have you done? Acted. But does Abigail live? Or sleep forever? God knows. Oh, you God knows, but do you know? No. No. Sarah's love was too strong. Abigail has gone back to the dark. And I am alone. Jonathan? Abigail. Oh, I was trying.
distressing before my mirror. I thought of thee. I thought of Sarah. I felt these fingers around my heart. I couldn't breathe. And I was tired. Did I sleep, John? Deep. But now you wake. <laughs> when you slept, Sister Abigail, what did you see and hear? Oh, this is a friend. Brother Israel of the ten tribes, no less. Yates. The Lord's true servant who wondrously guided thee back to life. Abigail, you were sleeping near to death, so we both ask, did thou see or hear anything on the far side? Did God, the master of dreams and death, transport you to far places? Did you, did you travel through Egypt? Did you see Noah's ark, or Rachel's tomb, or talk with the prophets? Did Moses stutter, or Elijah come down on a rope, or in his fiery chariot, and show you all the heavens, worlds, and spheres? Did you see Jerusalem? No. Only darkness. But I think on it, I heard a voice. Oh, my brother's a voice exultant, sweet and treasured, fine and true. God's voice. If he who made the world has a voice, yes. What does he say? Oh, my sister, my sweet child in Christ, I am God, the first mover, and the move no, no, now no, to no, give no, me... No, there was him, there was me. I was you? But... It was, it was still the voice of truth. You were judged innocent. Abigail, there is no guilt in me. No guilt in me? None. And whatever you do in light, and love is light and lovely, if that within you does not condemn you, you shall not be condemned. So live and love, and remember to praise the Lord with a full heart. Just as I'll remember to praise thee, Brother Yates. You, you have saved us both. If Abigail had stayed in that dark limbo, I too would have lost the light, despaired, and died. My Sir, love. Sir, I'll proclaim thy worth throughout the streets of Suffolk. I do not, Brother Gordon. We met under strange circumstances, just as we live in strange times when people dreamed of infinite liberty. And building heaven here on earth. Those coming after us will wonder if it happened. The Englishman turned all things topsy-turvy, seeing no reason why some should have so much and others so little. Oh, and Mistress Joan Holby of Combrook could tell Archbishop Lord to his face, I do not give a pin or a fart for his lord, the grace of Canterbury. <laughs> <laughs> what days we've been through, brother and sister. But they're already fading. And such ranting, holy imbeciles as Israel of the Ten Tribes, no less Yates will soon be gone too. People's great desire now is to sleep and say nothing. They see the new one freedoms taken from them one by one, but they don't care, Brother Gurdon. They're consumed by the greatest sin of all, indifference. They want to be left sitting in front of a warm fire, toasting their toes and purring. My thorny conscience will never let me sit. But we ranters who cling to the bright light of liberty and love are obsolete. And worse, dangerous, and must be pulled out by the roots. So, stay clear of me, friend. Soon, there will be no place left for my kind. There will be one here. Ah, my thanks, Brother Jonathan, but offers of help wound the pride of those who have caused you. What will you do? Continue to act. Call on us, Brother Israel. The ten tribes, no less, yes. And whatever you would have us do, we will do. And gladly. Gladly. That's a good word, sister. To do things gladly lifts the heart. There can be no happy glad man compared to a madman. For his mind is free of all care. His fits and his fancies are above all mischances, and joy is his favorite fare. So be mad, mad let us be. Shall the sad fiend be madder than me? Brother, are you well? I'm shaking off melancholy soul dust. Sister, come join in. No. I would have you sing along. Oh, sing along. And caper, too. John, you think it's proper? No. Well, I was rigid with righteousness, but I have now learned that the only way to save your life is to sacrifice your reputation. All together, now! 
we laugh at all wise men who really despise men. Their wisdom we always deny. Follow me and you'll see what you say is friendly. It's really by rapture divine.